water and water and water 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 Hydrophobia is not a very good game. This is far from a new take. The game came out over 10 years ago and has been panned in all that time for being boring, repetitive, and shallow. A bit ironic for a game about water. I don't hate Hydrophobia, but I don't love it. Frankly, I think it's forgettable. Even after I finish making this video, I don't think I'll remember very much. I believe the only things I will remember is the water and the final boss. Soon you'll learn that one of those things is not a compliment. I'd give a spoiler warning, but honestly, who really cares? Hydrophobia is one of those games I bought when it was new, and it ended up going on my backlog. When I was looking for my next game to cover, I saw it and thought, Oh right, that game was fucking awful. That's why I dropped it. Then I thought that was unfair. I had only played 20 minutes, and that was like 10 years ago. How bad could it really be? Well, it was fucking awful, and I remember why I dropped it. The trouble is that the game is mediocre. It's bland. The world building is bland. The story is dime a dozen science fiction, the gameplay is stiff, and the music is generic. When it decides to even work, that is. Normally, I can look past a generic story in a game, if the gameplay is fun. Sadly, the gameplay isn't very fun. You play as Kate, an engineer aboard Queen of the World, a city ship. A bit like that freedom ship concept, or this thing here fully realized. The ship is celebrating its 10th anniversary when it's attacked by terrorists, who seem to subscribe to the idea that all life must end. They leave messages all over the ship, telling everybody to keep yourself safe. And if you won't, they'll do it for you. They want to blow up the world, and they need technology only found on this ship to do it. So it's up to Kate to stop them. Kate suffers from, title drop, hydrophobia. Her other traits include, uh, if you wanted to learn more about her phobia and what brought it on, well then get in line, because the game never tells us. Okay, well they give us a couple of seconds of a nightmare sequence at the start of the game. And you hear the sounds of a drowning child anytime you spend more than six seconds underwater. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna get old fast. Now, why would a hydrophobic get a job aboard a ship? That's a great question. For someone with hydrophobia, with a crippling fear of water, she seems to have no problem whatsoever swimming all the time. It'd be like if they told us that the Doom guy in Doom 3 was deadly afraid of the dark, and then you just spend the whole game in the dark. Probably one of the only positive things about this game is its water physics. For 2010, this looked really impressive, and it still is impressive now. Even newer games struggle to make water work sometimes. I really like how the waves look, and I like how objects swish around on them too. I like how you can see water on the other side of glass, and how you can shoot this glass and make the water come out. This is all interesting, and it's very sad that the game doesn't do more with it. It just looks like a lot of wasted potential. The water isn't one of the problems this game has. It's the swimming. The swimming controls are terrible. Kate moves stiff on dry land as it is, and the aiming in this game is very janky. In water, it's even worse. It feels like you have to fight the controls to swim even through narrow hallways, a place you'll be spending what feels like half the game in. Combat's boring, and it feels like a chore. You get one gun, and you find new ammo types for it as you play, but none of them are very interesting. The shooting is very bland, and your gun has no impact. What I mean is, you know how games try and make the gun sound like it has some punch to it? It feels fun to shoot, and it sounds good to use? You know, make the combat something you want to take part in? Well, this game doesn't do any of that. The gun sounds like a toy, and that includes the enemy ones, too. The game also has cover shooting, the bane of every third person shooter since Gears of War. Some games use it well, not this one though. The 
final boss is so damn frustrating. It's hard, but not in the challenging way. What I mean by this is, the boss fight is unfair bullshit. It will spam attacks that knock you down and wombo combo you to death. This is the most obnoxious thing I've ever experienced in my life. The pattern is really simple. Wait for it to attack, stun it with a shock round in its weak spot, and then use your water powers to throw a barrel at it. Oh yeah, you get superpowers by the way, oh don't worry about it. And you repeat this task two more times. Classic arcade boss fight. What else can I bitch about? Oh right, the parkour. Since this was a third person shooter that came out in the post Uncharted world, it needs parkour. Well, unlike Uncharted, it's really stiff. And, well, okay. All I need to do is jump and, okay, what the hell is that? All right, I'll try again. All right, well, uh, maybe I'll try this time and, am I missing something? Am I doing something wrong? I'm doing what the controls say to do. Oh, you gotta be fu- So it turns out that the frame rate is somehow tied to jumping in this game. Maybe tied into more than that, but... Well, I had it set to 100, like the game allowed me to do. But you couldn't make the jump this way. You couldn't make any of the jumps this way. So I just cap it to 60, and that problem goes away. Well, the frame rate would explain why objects are spinning like this also. I know this is a very unfair comparison, but I stopped playing Tears of the Kingdom to make this video, and it's night and day with how far we've come in terms of parkour and climbing in video games. Is that a fair comparison? Well, consider this. Uncharted 2 and Infamous came out in 2009, so even for the time, Hydrophobia had very bad climbing controls. The developers, Dark Energy Digital, went out of business in 2012, just a few years after Hydrophobia failed. While it seems like some like IGN gave it a very good score, many didn't. I remember when this game came out, all anyone really talked about and praised was the engine's water physics. And nothing else, no one talked about anything else about this game. I can see why now. It seems to be the only lasting legacy of the game. A mostly forgotten game with pretty good looking water. It's a little sad that it seems to have been the thing that sunk the company. I wanted to try something new and cover a game I used to hate, as opposed to covering a game I always liked, and now that I've played the game from start to end, if I wasn't clear about how scathing this review is, I don't like this game very much, but I'd be hard passed to say I hate it. The developers before this game were mostly known for making pool games. Billiards, not swimming pools. They went into the deep end and tried to make something new, and sadly it didn't work out for them, but I have to commend them for even trying. We've managed to avoid drowning.